Do, do, are you scared of artificial life, artificial intelligence? Um, Elon Musk scared the shit out of me. Yeah, when he talked about it, like he he talks about it like we're in the, in the opening scene of a science fiction movie where he's trying to warn people, and then they don't listen to to the genius, and it goes south. Sort of depends. I chaired a debate on this um, with the Royal Society in London a few weeks ago, and uh, the so it's true now at the moment. What what people tend to be frightened of are general AIs or AGI, they call it, Artificial General Intelligence, which is like what we talked about earlier, a, a human-like capability thing. Yes. Um, and we're miles away from that. We, we don't know how to do it, we haven't got them, and we're miles away. So at the moment, artificial intelligence is expert systems and very focused systems that do particular things. You can be scared of them in a limited economic sense because they're going to displace people's jobs. And actually, interestingly, in this panel discussion we had, it's going to be like what you might call middle class jobs in the UK, so white collar jobs. It's not Which actually is why you, people are interested in universal basic income to sort of replace money that's going to yeah. be lost because there will be no jobs for all these people. Otherwise, we have uh, just a mass catastrophe. Yeah, they're very good. Someone said that these systems, artificial intelligence systems at the moment, are very good at doing things like law lawyers' work. Mm. <laughs> so they're very good at reading contracts and things like that. So it's interesting because it's, it's a revolution. It's not like the industrial revolution where it's manual labor that gets hit necessarily. This is kind of interesting because it hits that kind of intermediate level that usually escapes. Um, so you're right. One of the answers is to tax. There was an ex example was a robot tax. So in a car factory, you say to the manufacturer, well, okay, you can have a robot, but you pay the robot the same as you pay a person. And then that money goes into funding universal basic income or something like that. Mm. So I think the, there's got to be an, an economic change because these systems will be there. But all the experts I spoke to agreed that the idea of a Terminator-style general intelligence taking over the world is miles away. And um, so whilst we might start thinking about the regulation, it's not going to happen soon is the general point, I think. So I would disagree with him on that. I think I think it's too far in the future at the moment. I, think I might be one of those people that's going, eh, it's going to be all right. right. And, then, and then, you know, my iPhone takes me out <laughs> on the way <laughs> to the airport. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. I mean, you, you, it's our choice at the moment, isn't it? I mean, don't don't give your iPhone a laser, right. you know, <laughs> you know, for example. And it doesn't right. matter if it goes crazy and tries to take over the world. I know, I know that's a bit facetious because they can... He would say they could take over power grids and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I guess. But well, it's these concepts that are really hard to visualize, like Sir Kurzweil's idea of the exponential increase of technology leading t us to a point in the near future where you're going to be able to download your consciousness into a computer. You talk to computer experts, they're like, "There's no way. We're miles away from that." Yeah, or neuroscientists. Yeah, neuroscientists yeah. go. You, <laughs> we no way. Yeah. One, new, one brain cell, probably, we, we can't. But Kurzweil's yeah. convinced that what's going to happen is that as technology increases, it increases in this wildly exponential way where we really can't visualize it. We can't even imagine how much advancement will take place over 50 years. But in those 50 years, something's yeah. going to happen that radically changes our idea of what's possible. And I think Elon shares this idea as well, that it's going to sneak up on us so quickly that when it does go live, it'll be too late. Yeah. I mean, it's worth putting the, the, the framework in place, I think, the regulatory framework. Even as you said, for the more realistic problem, which is people's jobs are going to get displaced. Yes. And that, there's a great... Um, I was at a thing and some, someone said, I can't remember who it was, but they said that the it was a politician, that the job of the innovation system is to create jobs faster than it destroys them. So you've always got to remember that as a mm. government and as regulators. If you're going to allow technologies into the marketplace that destroy people's jobs, it is your responsibility to find a way of replacing those jobs or compensating those people, as you said. Well, Otherwise, you get breakdown. So being breakdown. a human being, though, is that people need some meaning. Like they it, just giving them income, I think, is just going to. I mean, it's just my speculation, but it's going to create mass despair. Even if you provide them, you provide them with food and shelter, they need people need things to do. So it's yeah. it, there's going to be some sort of a demand to find meaning for people. Give yeah. them occupations. Give them something. Some task. Let's say it seems to be one of the critical 
parts of being a person is that we we need things to do that we find meaning in you yeah. know like you were talking about we're the only things that we know of that have meaning that find meaning and share meaning and believe in that we're going to need something like that. If universal basic income comes along, I don't think it's going to be enough to just feed people and house them. Yeah. They're going to want something to do. If a, you know, a person is a, you're doing something for an occupation and this is your identity, and then all of a sudden that occupation becomes irrelevant because the computer does it faster, cheaper, quicker. These people are going to have this incredible feeling of despair and, and just not being valuable. Yeah, I mean, uh, what well, the utopian sort of a version of this is that everybody gets to do what we're doing now right which is make a living sort of thinking and creating and all that kind of you know so that that's the the utopian ideal is you don't yeah. need to do the stuff the job that you don't really want to do in the factory right uh, you, you can do the thing that humans are best at that that but i, I agree it's, it's that's a very utopian view yeah. Does everybody want to do that? Or does everybody have the mindset? Well, Maybe it goes great back to education. Though. If everybody had an interest like that, if everybody went on to make pottery and painting and doing all these different things that they've always really wanted to do, and their needs are met by, you know, the universal basic income money that they receive every month. But, boy, there's a lot of people I don't think have those desires or needs, and to sort of force it mm -hmm. onto them at age 55 or whatever it's going to be. Yeah, it seems to be very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's I, a big challenge. But I think that, in concept at least, it's inevitable that we do have some sort of an artificial intelligence that resembles us, or that resembles something like ex machina. If people choose to create that, I mean, choose to create it in our own image. But that's very godlike, isn't it? God created us in our own, His own image. Yeah. And and again, yeah, is it? I don't know. The, the, when I, when I talk to people in the field, as as you probably have, most of them say, don't know how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really right. It's going to be miles away. So maybe I'm hiding my head in the sand a bit. But I I don't think so. I, I think it's. I think we'll know it when. I don't think anyone's going to do it accidentally. Right. So I I don't think it's just suddenly going to be upon us. I I, I think. We will see. We will we'll see ourselves getting acquiring that capability. We'll see ourselves we'll, getting close. We'll, we'll see those systems beginning to emerge, and then we will think about it. Just I to, think. Two hundred years ago, if you wanted a photograph of something, you want a picture of something, you had to draw it. I mean, there was no photography two hundred years ago. Yeah. I mean, just think of that. It's almost inconceivable. No automobiles. No photography. Yeah. What was automobile? Well, maybe there was some sort of machines that drove people around, right? Something close. There was well, trains earlier than that, right? Mm -hmm. you, you go back 500 years, you have almost nothing. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, we've been quick. It's so <laughs> fast. It's so yeah. fast. I mean, and then this, what we're doing right now, there's people right now in their car that are streaming this. So they're in their car and they're listening as they're driving on the road. Maybe they have a Tesla. Maybe they have an electric car. They're driving down the road, streaming two people talking, where it's ones and zeros that are broken down into some audible form, and you can listen to it mm. in your car. That is bananas. Yeah, I agree. We've been quick. So quick. Well, think of the world, you know, the internet. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, not long. I mean, I remember it being invented. <laughs> 